Welcome back. My name is Ashley and this is My Sweet Perspective. And we are back to talk about Snowfall, season six, episode, I believe we're at episode eight, y'all. Give me, bear with me. Episode seven, excuse me, Charnel House. And uh, I guess I'm going to entitle this episode, The War Is Over, Ain't It? We, we, we all know, we all know the war is not over, but let's get right into it. This is the aftermath, y'all. This is the aftermath of the shootout, losing Uncle Jerome. And like I said, um, for episode six, you know, my anger wouldn't let me cry for a stranger, but this episode, um, it really brought out some emotion in me. It, it, it let some, um, emotion out of this OG, it, it let out some emotion. So let's get it started. Right away, we see that they are taking Jer Uncle Jerome immediately to the funeral parlor. And Franklin pays him on the side and is like, look, man, you you know the deal. Um, nobody can know. Uh, the police can't know. Let's make this expeditious, snappy. Um, you know, Lee is, of course, being Lee, my baby, which is offering comfort for this no-count heifer who didn't he couldn't even acknowledge his wedding gift that he brought back to them. Uh, and you know, she's, she's still in shock, but, it, but again, Lou, Lou cares about money, power, respect. I don't think she cared about Jerome like that. She cares about Jerome because he got her out of a life style that she didn't want any parts of again. And he tried to rescue her. He tried to captain save her. That's what your uncle Jerome did. Um, but as far as like a real love, Lou's too selfish for a real love. Next, we see Teddy uh, and the girl. And, you know, last week, Teddy then called the ex-wife, Julia, and was like, listen, uh, you know, you and you and my son need to get out of town because it is what it is. Uh, and she's like, what'd you do? So now she pops up. And so she sees um, Teddy and the girlfriend and she's pregnant. And Teddy's like, OK interesting and i'm thinking okay well when's the last time they got busy but she basically wants to break down what's going on why do we have to go into hiding what's really good and so um basically it comes out that he's you know you know he, this guy accused me of stealing and he's like well did you and she, she's like well did you and he's like uh i seized ill-gotten gains from a criminal in true colonizer fashion, he's not going to take any responsibility, any accountability, you know, for what he's done. And she's basically like, give him the money back. He's like, no, the girlfriend even eventually says, give the money back. He's like, no. And she's like, all right, you handle it or I will. He's like, what that's supposed to mean? She says, listen, a public execution. And I don't know if it's his public execution or somebody else's, but I believe what she said. Uh, he's just so daggum stubborn. So, um, Franklin has to go back to the PJs. Um, Leon is still getting everybody settled. And so Wanda answers the door and immediately she's nervous because she already has this foreboding about what's going to happen with Leon and everyone else. And that just, you know, chaos and danger and tragedy is going to ensue. And so, um, she's like, you know, what is it? And Sissy's there and she's like, um, Lee went to go stay with Lou. Where's Jerome? And immediately we know, and this is, th this is what's giving me emotion, right? Not Lou. That's not giving me emotion. What's giving me emotion is a sister losing her brother, a nephew losing his uncle, um, Lee losing, you know, kind of this uncle father figure. That's what's, that's, what's getting to me. Um, and the fact that Jerome wanted to get out of it and she just couldn't let him go. And so of course, um, you know, they have to take Sissy to see Jerome at the funeral parlor and just to look at him. And she's like, you know, did he suffer? Franklin goes to reach and she's, you know, because at this point, you know, she says later in the episode, everyone had a hand in it and everyone did. Everyone did. Um, so then Sissy goes to talk to Lou. And of course, Lou is blaming everybody else and gets in this whole place. You know, well, I have no one else I care about. So I have nothing left to lose. No, I'm, girl, shut up. And Sissy done lost her husband or so she thinks. Because again, I still don't know. We still don't know. But she done lost her brother and her husband. So it's like, girl, you have nothing really to talk about. 
the pain, the pain, like I said, the pain is what I'm feeling there. Uh, Lee and Franklin have a sit down and Leon is full in boss mode again. And he says he's getting the business ready to turn it over to someone else. And, and I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I think Leon's correct, but he's jumped back into this too, with too much ease, <laughs> with too much ease. So they're kind of sitting in everything that happened. And Franklin's like, you know, do I got credit with you, man? And he's like, yeah, you have credit as long as I'm living basically. And so Franklin's like, I need to borrow half a million. And, and, and Lee is like, for what? Um, and he was like, you know, I gotta, I gotta get my stuff together. And so of course, Leon's going to give it to him. Then we see Lou make a trip to see Scully because apparently she wants to have a conversation with him about how he coped with his daughter and girlfriend's passing. Um, and you know, he's like, it's just because I know that they're not gone. But in the meantime, I mean, she's fighting with his guards and like wanting him to fight her. And I'm like, okay, girls, again, making it everything about her. Um, next we see V and Franklin and they're sleeping and then Franklin has this nightmare and I want to know where they're sleeping. I know they're in hiding. Is that at one of the drops at one of the little houses? Um, because I was like, what, what bed is this on the floor? Are they sleeping on a mattress? Um, and again, y'all know, I still don't trust V, but moving right along, she comforts him, all that. Ruben is now at Oso's house. He sees the wife and basically is like, okay, you got a day. <laughs> We're right in the warehouse. I need to make sure that Teddy's set up so that the DEA can arrest him. Okay. Next thing we see, um, Wanda has earlier told Leon that, listen, this, I, I see, I, I can see what's about to happen. Um, I see the influence. I see what's going on here. And I can't be a part of this. If I, if I'm, a, I, I'm not gonna make it, if I stay here, he said, so you leaving me? She said, no, but I'm getting an apartment <laughs> out the PJ. So she has her bags and she goes to the center and um, since he's like, you're leaving us. She was like, I think I have to. Uh, and so basically since he's like, you know, we have these buildings, you're free to have an apartment there. And I also want you to take over the center, which again, I told you I'm all here for Wanda social worker vibes. Um, Next, we see Oso and Franklin meet. And Oso basically lays it all in line. He tells uh, Franklin about the DEA, the KGB, Teddy, everything he needs to know. And he's like, look, Franklin, you know, I've been working with the DEA. And Franklin's immediately like, oh. but he's like, they don't have anything on you. We've got Lou, but nothing on you. Uh, and so immediately, I guess Franklin feels a little bit better about that. And he's like, you know what? Oso, I understand. I understand you did what you had to do for you and your family. Next, we see this uh, Teddy's boss unofficially because Teddy's not really even employed by the CEA any, CIA anymore, is he? Like, okay, but he's talking to his boss like, you know, Teddy's going off the rails. This kid he stole the money from went and killed his dad. And he's like the, the you know what the white man said. Did what to, to Teddy's dad? Yeah. And he's like, you know, um, Teddy's not a bleeding heart. He's a patriot, but he's ambitious. Um, and he took all that money. We can do the bosses. Like, I don't want to hear anything about this stolen money. Just fix it. Plug the leak. Too many cracks. Fill the cracks. Plug the leak. Plug it up. Um, Teddy meets with, or Teddy calls Lou, not knowing anything that's going on or what's happening. And it's like, I need to meet with you. And so Lou is like, leave me alone. I'm busy. Okay, fine. Finally, I'll meet you at three o'clock. Well, I need you before I'll meet you when I get there. So she gets there. Of course, she's bruised, battered and bleeding. And he's like, what happened? Like you care, Teddy, you don't care. You're a terrible person, Teddy. And I, I hope I hope you get everything that's that's on its way to you because you, you, you carry that true colonizer spirit in everything that you do. Everything you do is justified or right in your eyes, in your own mind. And it just, it's infuriating. Um, but then Luke tells that Jerome died, you know, leave me alone. Tomorrow's the funeral. After that, this is all Franklin's fault. Anyway, I'll give you his head on a freaking platter. And I mean, Teddy has no choice to accept it because she drives off. Uh, the final kind of scene of this episode, we are now seeing can I just ask the question? Um, I remember, well, another creator actually brought it to my attention that Uncle Clifford's been there since, um, you know, Lou was at the, at the, with the madam, right? I think first, second season. So he's always been there, but it was, it was, it was nice to see him at the services. Um, again, Wanda's talking to Leon at the services and like, look at this, you know, Jerome was with Lou you know, this time last week and, and Leon seems to have this resolve or invincibility. Like he's not taking heed to anything that Wanda's saying, but Wanda's not wrong. She, she's discerning 
what's happening in this situation. Um, also comes to the funeral. So many people um, come to the funeral. Uh, what is his name? Big D, <laughs> Big D, whoever <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, but he's there. But it's just everybody. Everybody's there because at the end of the day, even though Jerome fell off towards the end, you know, he was having this internal struggle and he, he did the most. Um, his credibility was still good. I think the person who he was, who we all grew to know and love, um, is who they remembered there. Then we see crackhead Buckley, baby. And, you know, Lou, I'm sorry. And she's like, you didn't, Jerome didn't pay you and ask for your gun, you know, at the warehouse or whatever. And he was like, no, 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 you were smoking crack. And yes, he paged you. So we'll see what happens with that. Finally, um, you know, Franklin comes up to Lou after the service and is like, hey, auntie, you know, what can I do for you? You can answer me this question, Franklin. Why'd you come back for me? And so Franklin's response was multifaceted. Now, while I do think Franklin is going to do what he can to try to uh, get Lou to do what he needs to do to get to Teddy, he he really did do that because he cared about his uncle. And in a way, he still cares about Lou. I, that's just my take on it. Um, and But she calls him, you really are the devil. And he's like, yeah, I know. But my thing is, Lou would do this 10 times, 100 times worse if somebody took $70 million from her. And she would. And and like I said, I'm titling it, the war is over, ain't it? We know the war is not over. We know Lou is still vindictive and she still is going to blame Franklin. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Let me know below. What are your predictions? What are you thinking is going to happen? Um, we're winding on down, guys, and I'm going to miss snowfall. I'm going to miss snowfall. But let me know what you think. Again, my name is Ashley. This has been My Sweet Perspective. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, like, share, comment, subscribe. We're at 239. Listen, we're almost at 240. Like, come on, join me. Let's have fun. Let's review some shows. <laughs> see you guys.